things are about to get ludicrous in the carbon plate wars and Saucony is leading the charge. This is the Saucony Endorphin Elite. It's incredibly good and it's some of the most fun you can have under 40 millimeters. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I finally get to tell you guys about this shoe. I've had it for a little while. I've known about it for a little bit longer, but it's finally here to talk about. It's the Endorphin Elite. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Saucony sent me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for them. However, they're not paying me to make this video and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Endorphin Elite. First, let's talk about the specs. The shoe is incredibly tall. It looks gigantic, but it is race legal under 40 millimeters of stack height. It is a 39.5 millimeter shoe. So just bumping up against that limit, getting as tall as they can. And it has an eight millimeter drop, giving us 31.5 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. Now in this shoe, we've got a brand new foam from Saucony. It's Power Run HG. And what that is, it is a Piba foam. So it's using a Premier Race Caliber foam, but it's putting it into a super critical process. So with super critical foams, there's kind of two main things that you have to think about. The process itself is you take kind of a core puck of something and then you apply a lot of heat and a lot of pressure to it and then at some point once it gets super critical then you start putting gas into it as well so the two main ingredients that you can tinker around with in terms of making super critical foams for shoes is you can tinker around with the source material and you can tinker around with the gas so think about dna flash the gas is a nitrogen so that's why they call it a nitro foam uh, but if you switched out that nitrogen for carbon dioxide then you'd have sketchers perform hyperburst. Now there's also a difference that you can use in terms of the source material. You can use EVA as a source material and then you could get something like fuel cell. I believe they're using EVA as a source material. But if you switch up that source material to something a little bit more premium, then you can have something like Power Run H. G. Now this Power Run HG material is supposed to be lighter and more responsive than the Power Run PB that we've seen in the already great Endorphin Pro 3. Saucony says that this new material is going to give 95% of the energy return back to the runner, which is an absolutely amazing figure. Now, sandwiched in between the two layers of Power Run HG is a carbon plate, and you can actually see it uh, through this little window on the bottom of the shoe. And that carbon fiber plate is unique in that it is slotted, so it's kind of different than the typical kind of scooped carbon fiber plate and reminiscent to me of the energy rod system that we've seen in some of the Adidas offerings. The idea with this slotted carbon plate is that no matter how your foot is landing on the ground, the shoe can absorb impact, but still also then uh, stabilize itself so that way you can bring and roll forward for that next stride. And the insole itself also is something that Saucony did not ignore. They're using Power Run PB, they're using a neck level midsole foam and combining it with their racing foam to give you the midsole insole combo. Onto the upper, we have a very minimal upper. And again, Saucony always does such an innovative job with uppers. And one of the unique things about this shoe is this band that's going around the middle of the foot here. It wraps around the foot, but then it also hooks underneath the carbon fiber plate. So that way the upper is definitely kind of like strapped in to that carbon power and that midsole foam magic. So it's a very unique system and it has this really 
weird kind of like bumper pad nubbin at the back of the shoe, which I'll have uh, some thoughts on a little bit later when we talk about how the shoe actually held up for me. The other thing that I think is really notable about this shoe is how aggressive the speed roll is. And so for those of you who've been running in the Endorphin series, you're familiar with the speed roll, the way that the shoe is kind of curled forward. And here you could see there's a very aggressive kind of shaping of the shoe right here from kind of like the, the pads of the feet. Moving on up, the shoe takes an aggressive turn upward. And this is probably the most aggressive kind of rocker or speed roll or toe spring that I've seen in pretty much any shoe ever. Now all this comes together at a surprisingly lightweight package. That's the miracle of this Power Run HG. The total weight comes in at 7.2 ounces for my US Men's size nine or 204 grams. All right, with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what you guys came here for. What's it like to run in the shoe? So I took this shoe out for two pretty significant test runs. The first one was straight out of the box, 21 miles of a run. The run was two miles easy, two miles marathon effort, I'm getting ready for my next marathon in early March. And so this is a, a useful time for a brand new super shoe to come into my hands for some testing. So uh, the shoe feels amazingly good. And so especially if you guys are already liking what Saucony is doing with the Endorphin series, you're really going to enjoy the fit of the shoe. The shoe is not like completely brand new or different. It still feels like an Endorphin series shoe, but with that extra stack height, but with that brand new foam, you're getting a elevated experience and it feels really great to run in. It's not like super like condensed soft. So like you're not gonna like squish down uh, completely into it. Uh, you are gonna get some of that kind of like a little bit of resistance to it, but there is squishiness. So you're gonna get that sinewy chewiness that we've seen in some other foams before, uh, but there's just a lot of it and it's got it in the right places in my opinion. So I felt like at marathon pace, it really felt like a fantastic shoe to be able to run in. And I even felt like at some of the easy paces, it wasn't bad. Now, I wouldn't recommend to use this as a daily trainer, but if you've got a workout like mine that had some easy miles or some kind of like float-ish miles and some marathon effort miles in it, I feel like this is a really good choice because a lot of times you're kind of like tolerating the easy paces because you want to get to some of the faster paces in your super shoes. This shoe can actually handle both of them well, although at some of those easier paces, the height of the shoe starts to become a little bit more apparent. The aggressive speed roll on here, I'm definitely feeling, but it was working for me really well. So like this eight millimeter drop and an aggressive speed roll to me kind of like raises eyebrows and it feels like that's too many things put together. You need to kind of like mellow out the drop a little bit, but I felt like these two things worked really well together with the way my foot was kind of like landing in that midfoot forefoot area right before uh, the real curl of that speed roll at those marathon efforts. So I felt like I was getting a lot of that goodness of that slotted carbon plate to keep things stable, of that Power Run HG to keep things absorbing impact, but also nice and springy for that next stride. I think that the best way, at least that marathon effort that I can kind of explain the way that this shoe felt for me is that it kind of felt like a much airier version of the Endorphin Pro 3, but with an aggressive kind of toe spring that I might see in an Adios Pro 3. So if I actually take these two shoes, I kind of feel like it feels somewhere in between them in terms of the way that the foam feels, but I also feel like there's a lot more stack height in the Endorphin Elite than compared to the Adios Pro 3. So I feel like I'm getting much more shock absorption from that foam and I feel like from that taller height rolling me forward gives me a nice sense of momentum. So it's a really exciting shoot to have for those 21 miles. But I will say at the end of that run, I did have a couple of issues with the shoe and those were primarily only with the upper, which is a surprising kind of miss for a Saucony. And I'll say miss in kind of air quotes because Saucony has some of the best uppers in running right now and they have for a very long time. For example, in the Endorphin Pro 3, I think that this upper is just about perfect. You put it on your foot. It feels fantastic. It's one of the most comfortable racing uppers that you can have. It's very snug, but it doesn't bind your feet at all. And it manages to stay really lightweight. They keep the lightweight with this material that they're using in the Endorphin Pro 3, but they had, had two problems, one in the front and one in the back. In the front, there's 
enough space up here in terms of like how big the toe box is. But this material, it's a little bit kind of scratchy. It's a little bit of almost like a, not a wire mesh, but it doesn't feel like a fabric. It feels more like a, a plastic based textile. And so what ended up happening is my toes, for some reason, I, they had plenty of space in the shoe, but what I re realized more into my second run than I did necessarily on this first one. But I think what my toes were doing is they're kind of curling themselves up a little bit, trying to grab into the foam, I think. And as the toes curled up, the knuckles of my toes were rubbing against uh, the top of the upper. So I had a little bit of kind of like chafing on the top of that skin. And this is kind of what happened by the end of my second run in the shoe is that it kind of had a little bit of bleeding through and because that rubbing was kind of very repetitive and this is a little bit of an abrasive material. So even though I was wearing socks on both of those runs, just the, the effort and the repetition and the slight abrasiveness of this material made it a little bit uncomfortable for me. The other area where I had a little bit of issues in the upper uh, is back here in the heel. And that's where we're talking about this uh, kind of like pad. So this is a really kind of weird way to finish off the heel cup of a shoe. I've never kind of quite seen anything like it before. It's just this kind of like, round, almost hexagonal shape of a kind of like a piece of foam back here. Uh, and it kind of cups the Achilles nicely. So I go back and forth on whether I think it's great or just strange. It does feel nice when you're putting the shoe on to kind of like grab this piece of foam here. So that's really nice to the touch. And then it kind of stays out of the way and kind of like just kind of brushes up against the Achilles. So I think those of you with sensitive Achilles, where sometimes other knit materials might dig in to the back of your ankle, uh, you're actually gonna, I think, really appreciate this. But the other problem I had is that like, I had a hard time really locking down, at least on the first run, uh, the ankle fit here. And so I had to really cinch down up at the front. And so the top of my foot, right up at the kind of like the top laces here, felt a little bit tight. And the back here felt a little bit sloppy um, at marathon effort. Uh, nothing that was too distracting, nothing that made the shoe feel like unstable, but it was something that I kind of noticed and it took a while for me to kind of like get over that. So I'm not sure that this is gonna be a long-term problem because by my second run, it's something that I didn't even notice anymore, but I did still kind of feel a little bit of tight tension up at the top of the foot. So this fit around here isn't quite as good as I've come to expect from other excellent Saucony uppers. So that's something to consider. But let's talk about that second run that I went on. Second run that I took the shoe on was a threshold repeat workout, what I call my mile repeats or mile repeats, six minutes at threshold with one minute recovery. So working at a little bit of a faster pace than marathon effort. For those speeds, I felt like Power Run HG is really fantastic at that faster speed as well. This is one of those foams where I just feel like the more you push into it, the more it's gonna give you back. So it's not a shoe that I felt like I was bottoming out in at all. I felt like it still had plenty of cushion, but also was just giving me plenty of horsepower uh, for all of those repeat efforts. And I felt like I had one of my best workouts so far of this marathon build. So I was really excited to be able to run in this shoe. It was a really, fun shoe to be able to have and rip those mile repeats or mile repeats. And I just had a really fantastic time with it. As far as grip goes, the rubber on the outsole, uh, I've seen patterns like this before in other similar shoes, really thin piece of rubber with some of those kind of like striation patterns on, on the outside, which I think look really great. And functionally, they were all working for me as well. Uh, I feel like the shoe both at this threshold speed and also at marathon speed is an incredibly stable shoe. And I think part of that is just because of how wide the shoe is. I think there's plenty of shoe for you to land on. And the other part is, again, I think that slotted carbon fiber plate is gonna help even if you are landing slightly off of like perfectly level and flat, it's gonna help absorb the impact off center and kind of get you right as you head into that speed roll. So uh, a pretty incredible shoe to run in. The only one thing that I noticed with running at this shoe at that faster pace of, of threshold efforts versus marathon pace for me though, is that I think that the location of this speed roll where it starts happens to be exactly kind of like where my foot hits or wants to hit the ground when I'm running at threshold effort. So I feel like that's not kind of like the ideal place to be hitting this shoe. And I felt like some of my foot strikes weren't so pleasant because of the fact that like I wasn't landing on the shoe and then rolling forward or landing on the front of the shoe and kind of just bouncing 
and pawing along the ground that way. And so I think that in some other Saucony shoes where I've had issues, I think maybe some of the same things are happening where it's just that angle right there is not an ideal place to land in my foot sometimes tends to land there and every once in a while I'd feel like yeah that wasn't exactly right like the shoe was telling me like maybe it's telling me I'm overstriding or something like that but it was giving me feedback every once in a while that wasn't so comfortable that told me that like all right this shoe maybe the speed roll isn't shaped exactly for my foot strike but for the most part it's a really fun shoe to run in and very, very quick and exciting. So now let's get to some of my summary points where we talk about what the shoe's best for, what I think some of its competition is, and some other shoes that you might want to pair it with. So I think that the shoe is best for race day or your biggest, toughest workouts. It's a race day shoe. It's not something that you're going to be using to go for your everyday easy runs. That's not what it's designed for. There are other shoes that are better suited for that. This is the shoe that you want to race in for those long distance races and those toughest workouts that you're going to be using to prepare for those races. Now, when it comes to shoes that you're probably also going to be considering if you're looking at the Endorphin Elite, there's, I think, three that are really close competitors to this that also merit some consideration. The first is going to be the obvious choice, the Endorphin Pro 3. This is using Power Run PB, which is a PIBA-based foam. I don't think it's a super critical PIBA foam, and so I think that's the main difference from it. This is one of my favorite racing shoes from last year, and I feel like the upper is better on the Endorphin Pro 3 than the Endorphin Elite. And for a lot of you, I think this might be the shoe that you choose. So it's definitely something that you should consider because it also uses that speed roll technology in this shoe. The other one that I also feel like because of the aggressive speed roll that you should consider is the Adios Pro 3. Again, one of my favorite racing shoes from last year. Has a very aggressive kind of toe spring or rocker up front. I feel like the Light Strike Pro that's in this shoe maybe compresses and decompresses a little bit faster than the Power Run HG does in the Endorphin Elite. But I also feel like this shoe is a little bit heavier than the Endorphin Elite and just a little bit shorter. Even though it is a 39 millimeter stack height shoe, it just feels a little bit shorter underfoot than the Endorphin Elite does. Somehow the Endorphin Elite just feels like a super tall shoe, which is what makes me also think that you might want to consider the Adidas Primex. Now there's a Primex Strong is the most recent version, but I have the original Primex. Now this is above the 40 millimeter limit. So if that matters to you, this is not something that you wanna be racing in, but this is a 50 millimeter stack shoe that a lot of people have been really enjoying. I feel like the feeling of this shoe is probably the closest that I can use to tell people what the Endorphin Elite feels like, although this is a much heavier shoe and it's not nearly as wide of a platform that you're landing on. So this one feels a lot less stable compared to the Endorphin Elite, which I actually feel like is a very stable racing shoe. So those are three racing shoes that I think that you should consider if you're looking at the Endorphin Elite. Now, in terms of shoes that you can pair this shoe with, I think that the natural thing, and I'll leave this kind of as a placeholder, I think the natural pairing is gonna be the Kinvara Pro. The shaping of that shoe, the look of that shoe, I think is going to make this the natural companion of it. Now, I don't have the Kinvara Pro yet in for testing. It's coming out much later this year, but I think with the way that Saucony has described that shoe to me, I think that's gonna be the daily training companion to go with the Endorphin Elite. But in the meantime, a shoe that you can pick up is going to be the Endorphin Speed 3. Now, Saucony has told me that they really want this shoe to be kind of a speed day shoe, a workout shoe, and not the daily trainer. But I do know that a lot of you guys are using it as your daily trainer anyway. So I think that pairing these two together is going to be a really fun one to punch. Now, I think that there are other daily training shoes that might also work well with it, but if you want to be in that endorphin speed roll family, those are the two shoes that I think you should go with. Now let's talk about the buying guide. This shoe is brand new. It comes out very, very soon. It's going to be retailing for $275 and that is a lot of money. Is it worth $275? I think at this point, racing shoes are just ridiculously expensive. And if you're willing to spend $250, I feel like 
sadly, like what's another $25? Uh, I don't really love it when the shoe companies take advantage of that mentality, but I feel like that's where I'm at. I'm like 225, 250, 275. It's basically all the same. I want the running shoe that fits best for me and my running. And if this shoe is going to fit best for you, the 275, I feel like is a fair price for the shoe. But keep in mind, of the shoes that I've already told you about, the Endorphin Pro 3 retails at 225, the Adios Pro 3 retails at 250, and then the Primax Strong is up to 300, but every once in a while, this shoe does go on sale. I don't know if it's gonna go on sale again before the next one releases, but also something to consider. So in terms of the pricing, I've shown you a $225, a $250, and a $275 shoe. I feel like the Endorphin Elite is pretty much right in there. It's a lot of money and I wish it were cheaper, but do I think it's overpriced? No. So if you are interested in the Endorphin Elite, if you like the speed roll from Saucony, I think that this is a shoe that you should definitely pick up because it is a lot of fun. So those are my thoughts on the Endorphin Elite. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do right here on YouTube Monday through Friday. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?